it is indeed time for a pretty giant Sephora haul. I got, I think, one item from Ulta as well, and then a couple of things that like brands have sent me. Really a crap ton of makeup that I need to get testing. But today's video is going to be a bit of a try-on haul of a bunch of new makeup. So we have, I feel like I'm already getting into it, but the Ilia, the base milk. This is not a first impression because I love this product so much. By far a standout of this year already. Anyway, we have a bunch of new makeup that I could possibly try. The new Makeup Forever Foundation, which I've already been testing. The new, already smudgy, <laughs> Natasha Denona Hyper Real, I'm sorry, Hyper Natural Face Palette. Really excited to finally dive into this one because I've just felt so on the fence about it. I have the new Dior Skin Filter, which I think is some sort of Charlotte Tilbury dupe or is trying to do something similar. The new Refi Lash Sculpt with the crazy bizarre wand. The new cream eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty, which this is like the kind of makeup product I've always wanted to come out with. A new um, tangerine shade, She's the Moment from Patrick Ta, which definitely going to be putting this on my cheeks. Look. Is it very close to, do we know her? I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. We got the Bosma blush. We got another blush from Dior. Um, springtime is a great time for blush, but this is more like a highlight. It's like kind of a peachy highlight. Let's just begin getting things onto the face. So I already did prep with the face base milk from Ilia and yeah, it's, I want to say it's kind of on par with the love I have for the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Some of you might know that that product is something I've loved, I think literally since the beginning of my channel. So the fact that I love this so much, just know that that recommendation is kind of huge. Um, and also the comparison. But I'm going to first put on the Naturium Phyto Lip Balm, the Phyto Glow Lip Mask. So I'm a big fan of the balm. They sent me the mask, so I figured why not kind of prep the lips with it today? It is, it's quite thick. I wish I had the box so I could figure out the main ingredient in here. Mmm, very light, sweet scent. That feels really, really good on the lips. My lips were a little bit dry. The Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I have this as an option. We could use this with the Cali Ray Corrector and go for like a very light coverage kind of thing. Or I could go in with the Makeup Forever HD Skin Glow. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in half the face with the Dior and see what it does to the skin and then apply the Makeup Forever um, over top the Dior and then without the Dior under it. Because, you know, this is pretty much like a Charlotte Tilbury filter kind of thing. and. I, unless this has a ton of coverage, I'm not seeing myself use it as a alone kind of item. So this, that's how I'm gonna test it today. But here is the shade one. I have the shade one. So I'm going to apply it onto this side of my face. Whoa, it does have a scent. Not the, is this the typical Dior scent? Hmm. It almost feels like a scent I've smelt from Givenchy. Interesting. So, just kind of spreading that over the skin. It does offer a glow. I'm wondering if there's a lighter shade than this. If this is the lightest shade, that would feel bizarre to me because it's matching me and I'm not even that pale. But I will say, it looks, it looks nice. It does offer this kind of soft, filtered effect. And what I am immediately liking more about it than the Charlotte Tilbury is there's a little bit less mica. So as a true, like, all over the face product, I tend to lean towards items that have less mica and less of a pearl. So that is without. That is with. It definitely has a little bit of coverage. Like, 
I would say immediately if I had to choose between going out of the house with this side or out of the house with this side, I would go with this side. So, you know, it's doing something. But let's see the Makeup Forever HD Skin Glow. Be able to see how this reacts with this product. And luckily, this is also a foundation I've been testing. So that's good. If we were doing like first impression on top of first impression, as far as the foundation goes, you know, things can get a little wonky, definitely have been there. I'm going to take my beloved BK106 foundation brush and just start applying. I do also really, really love using this foundation with fingers, but today, just for messiness sake, I'm going to use the brush. And I will say this shade of the Makeup Forever is 1N00. It is a little bit too light for me, but I do like the undertone. So what I've been doing <laughs> essentially is just like bronzing up the skin extra. And <laughs> I finally bought the right Makeup Forever foundation. I had been testing the wrong one. I did like an entire wear test of it and then someone caught it in my comments in another video. I was like, oh, stay tuned for like a wear test of the new HD foundation from Makeup Forever. And someone was like, I don't think that's the one. And then I went back to Sephora to actually pick up the right one. I almost bought the same one again. The reason I think I did that was that the packaging just looks so similar. I don't have any, ex any excuses, but. So here is what the foundation's looking like. There was truly a part of me that did not to expect to love the Makeup Forever HD Skin Glow as much as I do, but it's just so freaking pretty. I do want to take, I think like a sponge, just kind of melt everything back in. What I really enjoy about it is how thin it is on the skin while leaving this really pretty finish. I don't think personally that that's very common. It just has this, this thinness that is really, really appealing. There's a nice blur. It's not like the most blurring thing you'll ever find. However, it makes up for it in the thinness of the actual makeup on the skin. And that is ultimately something that I look for. I love makeup that truly does not want to fight with your skin. It's not like trying to push it away from it. It's I love makeup that your skin can very like easily accept. And also it wears really, really well. So if you were contemplating or waiting for like a full-on review of this a lot of you mentioned like a standalone review wouldn't work but i'm happy to do like do some like natural light demos and like more of a full-on review of this in more of a collective video but just know this is really good but speaking of the forever glow star filter this side of the face versus the other what i'm noticing not noticing like a huge difference this side definitely looks glowier I think, so if you're planning on using this as like under a foundation, I don't know about that. However, I haven't tried this mixed in or on top of a foundation yet. So there's definitely more testing needed with this, especially like a hybrid um, multifunctional product like that. But all over the face, yeah, there's a little bit more glow, but I don't know if it's worth going the extra mile. Now, where is that Cali Ray corrector? I'm very excited to try this product. They have a warm yellow shade that usually you don't see a lot of brands coming out with a shade like this. So I wanted to go ahead and give it a go. You guys know how picky I am with concealers and correctors. So we'll just have to see, you know, we'll see how it shakes out. I do have um, concealers that I can use on top of this if we so desire. Let's One thing I do like, by the way, is that this does have caffeine. I usually do really well with caffeine products. That looks really pretty. I used a very small amount just because I was a little bit afraid, but wow. <laughs> I feel like I just sounded like Owen Wilson. That looks really pretty. 
I think like I can still see like the hollows under my eyes, which is not like my most favorite thing. However, like the finish, the texture is really pretty. On top, I'm going to use a little bit of 1.5C from Kosas and we'll see how it layers. Oh God. I really need to get a new mirror. I broke the other one and I've been waiting so that I don't have to go to Ikea on a weekend. And what do you know? I'm gonna end up going to Ikea on a weekend tomorrow. So just pressing that in. I really got no complaints about that. I think it looks nice. I, I don't, again, no complaints so far about this one. Layered really well with the concealer, which is usually a good sign. I don't have a specific new bronzer, but I do have the Hypernatural face palette from Natasha Denona. And I wanna give you guys swatches of the bronze and contour because there's three shades here. And I think it would be helpful for everyone to actually get an idea of who this palette could work for. First of all, the textures of these, really, really smooth. They don't seem to be like chalky with pigment, which is nice, or too creamy either, which too creamy of a product can sometimes be like not a great thing. So here are the three shades. We have the lightest, the medium, and the deepest. They do seem to be buildable, but I still don't think that this is going to work for very, very deep skin tones. Bronzer contour portion of this product. I'm going to go ahead and use the lightest shade in here and get to bronzing. This is the BK 110 brush, and I just wanna get that lightest shade, so this will be good for that. I guess I could use this mirror. Actually, comes with the palette. Pressing it onto the skin just to see how it interacts with everything. The it definitely has a little bit of a blur, like the the powder does, which is nice. Just kind of getting this area. You know, it's interesting, the more I look at the Dior as an all over product under the foundation that I have going, the more I'm like, I just feel like it exaggerates a little bit of like the fine lines that I have. I don't even know if I would use it that way. Personally, that's how I'm feeling at the moment, like looking at this real up close. However, like from far away, I do kind of like that more glowy finish. Now I'm going to take just the tip of the brush into the powder and kind of just go down the nose a little bit. Like a contour for the nose, but like not really. Just like more of like a defining kind of thing we have going. Um, Yeah, I think it looks good. As beautiful as the blush in here looks, I think I do wanna go ahead with the blush that I've been waiting for. It is the Patrick Tosh She's the Moment Tangerine Blush. Hold the phone. Taking that as I usually do, like right under the eye. Oh, that's pigmented. You, I don't think you guys can necessarily see it as much in the monitor, but like, or on camera, but that was a lot of pigment right away. So I'm gonna need to blend that out. But it is pretty. I love a pop like this with blush. With a tangerine blush, it just like really wakes up my skin in a way that I think other blushes really don't. It just feels very fresh. And um, I think it just like, I don't know, I just think my skin tone and like my season does really well with tangerine. I'm just gonna take a clean brush again and just kind of like blend this out a little bit because it is a little intense, but what are you gonna do? I like blush. <laughs> and now let's go ahead and take the cream. Usually the cream is like very, very similar in color, but, and quite thin and dewy. Yeah, still a very similar formula to what I'm used to from these duos. Looks really nice. And even like, I just love the way the cream applies over the powder. Like even the powder 
from Natasha Denona, the bronzer I just used, like, just, do you see that? I, I love the kind of moisture that it adds back to the skin. I, I think, like, the powder is beautiful because it's, like, very blurring and soft. The formula of this powder is not far from the formula of the Natasha Denona, by the way. Very similar, but the moisture that that cream blush adds back in just very very inspired in my opinion i also do have a highlight though this is peachy from dior and i think i want to at least swatch this for you guys i wasn't expecting it to be this uh deep it looks like it can be sheared out pretty well should we try it i don't know i just love the way the cheeks look so much and i'm afraid i'm gonna like mess it up but all right i'm gonna take a little bit like such a small amount it does feel it does feel like these new like liquid illuminators from dior have quite a thin texture that dries down so i'm gonna call that pretty similar to the charlotte tilbury like beauty light wand formula that doesn't look bad but again, I'm like really not taking much. I'm just kind of like taking my finger from the back of my hand and then pressing this on because the cheeks and the blush are like really, they are a statement today. Oh God, that, look, that looks really cute on the tip of the nose. You know what's interesting? You know, um, like some people when they put the blush like right on the tip of the nose and it's like, you know, I, I understand how that could be, um, what's the word? polarizing but if you like that look this little highlight does really well with that however i do need to like wash my hands now because i feel like i got makeup everywhere okay so like the base is mostly done i want to go ahead into the eyes I gotta tell you really really loving this patrick ta blush and she's the moment i just i i think she's the moment today though i really really want to try the huda beauty creamy palette i think we should go on with the natasha denona hyper natural palette i think what i want to do is like just do a very simple look with these two shades because i saw her doing that on natasha denona i saw her doing that on instagram and i just want to see like how it translates just just two shadows all over the eyes like how pretty does it actually look in person so, so far, this is a really nice shade. It's called Every Day, and it's a nice brown shade with a little bit of a shift. It's like a very, something between a satin and a metallic, I would say. It's gonna blend these edges out a little. If this is going to be like a true everyday palette, it needs to be like super easy to work with. And I'm gonna take just like a little bit more on the outer corners just for a touch of definition. But again, going for like more of an everyday kind of look, I don't want it to be like super, super smoky. That blended really nicely. It's pretty, but like, you know, I'm not like wowed right now. Like it's nice, you know what I mean? But this sparkly top coat looks freaking beautiful. It's called Dreamy. Oh yeah. She just... She knows how to do it. It's really nice. It's a more of like a drier, uh, sparkly top coat formula that's very translucent. And the glitters are a little bit more, um, they're not like all the same weight, which is kind of nice. Kind of adds a little bit of dimension. But I gotta be honest, for the money, for the money I spent on this. Not convinced. I'm gonna take just a little, little bit of the statement shade, the deepest shade right here. And just kind of do like a little bit of like a wing. Just for, just for kicks. I think it would help make the look come together a little more. Yeah, I'm gonna say the wing definitely helps, but you know, I do really, really like this shade that I used for the wing. I think the eye look as a whole looks really, really pretty. But for like Natasha Denona money, the bronzer was pretty. I would lead you towards this. 
I think I would just say get the I Need a Nude palette. That's just the first impression. That's how I'm feeling though. Should we go ahead and try this new Refi mascara? I'm so excited to try it. This is the Lash Sculpt mascara from Refi. I gotta tell you, like when I was reacting to a bunch of Trend Mood new products, out of all the new launches that I saw, this one has been kind of sticking in my brain because I just have no idea how it's actually going to look on the lashes. I haven't seen the wand. Oh God, <laughs> the wand looks scary. And how do I get it back in? To get the wand in, make sure you're putting like the tip in. Here, I'll show you guys. Do this, kind of go like this rather than like try to do it straight on, you have to kind of go like that and then it's easy. Okay, but okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm going to curl my lashes. So went ahead and set my brows with the Infinite Hold Brow Gel from Make Beauty, which I think might be one of the best brow products I've ever used in my life. That's the feeling I have uh, since I have this, like I don't wanna set my eyebrows with anything else. It's, it's perfect, but yeah, I'll leave it linked down below as well as everything, but like, it's not a new product, but it is new to me and I haven't tried anything, I think, as good as this brow gel. Incredible wand. Like, the whole reason I wanted to try it was the wand. Did I even curl my lashes? Did I? I think I did. I, I think I did. You know, this is a weird experience putting on the mascara. Like I'm not used to using a wand like this, but I'm kind of just looking down into this mirror and it is helping. And it's a very defined lash. I don't know if it's like worth the trouble though. I don't know. Let's see how it looks on this eye. What? What you have to know is like, there's only bristles on this one side. They're not all the way around on the brush. So like, it's, so it works very much like a comb. It's gonna take some time to build up. That eye turned out really pretty actually. Let's see if I can finesse this a little bit more. Because the wand is so long, I'm finding that make like it, it's a little bit difficult to get more precise. You do get more comfortable though with the wand as you continue to use it. And my lashes do look very long. Like I think they look quite long, but I don't know. They look they definitely look good. I will say like the lash look that they advertise with this mascara is pretty much exactly the lash look that I'm getting, which I gotta tell you is not the typical story with mascaras. Way more often the mascara ads are like so bonkers and you're like, that is very clearly not what my lashes are going to look like. It does have a little bit of this like, like the outer corners of the eyes look really pretty. I'm finding, I don't think that this is perfect for like a really wide open eye necessarily, but if you really do like that almost like very soft, like individual kind of lash look, I almost get like a K-beauty kind of vibe from this. I think it's really pretty for that. I don't know, I kind of like it. I really like the way the eyes look in general. For the lips, so I do have a little bit of the lip mask still going and my lips feel good. Didn't really use the long comb eye tints that they sent me, but I do have a reel on Instagram using these. So make sure to go follow me on Instagram. I'm always testing makeup over there too. Um, you can find it down below. So if you're interested in these, I did have already been trying them, but for the lips, I just tried out a ton of new lip products. In my recent video, I talk about a lot of viral lip balms. I, for today's look, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and with Persimmon from House Labs, just because I've been really, really loving this one. And at first, maybe I'll use a little liner. This one from Jones Road is The Nudist, and just going to very lightly line. That lip mask is making this 
apply like really, really easily. My lips feel really good right now. Um, but again, persimmon from House Labs going on. It's just such a pretty like everyday lip product. And this is the final makeup look. I wouldn't really change much about it. I actually feel really good in it. I think let's go ahead and talk about like some of my first impressions, uh, like the final first impressions for this try on haul. First of all, I do want to acknowledge, you got to subscribe if you want to see me talk about the new Huda Beauty Cream eyeshadow palette, the Bosma blush, because I didn't get to that today. But let's talk about the products that I did try today. First of all, the Ilia Base Face Milk is always a hit for me. Like that's not even a question at this point, not a first impression. Uh, same thing kind of goes with the HD uh, Skin Hydro Glow Foundation from Makeup Forever. It's just like treating me so well. These new products from Dior, I don't know. I'm gonna say first impressions are just kind of meh at this point. I do like that this is a pump and I liked the way my skin looked when I applied it all over, but I don't know. I don't know if this is really anything better than just applying a skin tint that's glowy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not seeing a huge filtering, whoa, my skin looks incredible kind of effect, but as like an illuminator on top of makeup, I'm still open to this working well for that because this does set down and doesn't remain really creamy. And I think that that potentially could be really pretty. So this could be like the perfect, super, super natural liquid highlight. So I'm still open to this being good for that. I wish I got another shade of this illuminator from Dior. The peachy shade is pretty, but it is just a little bit too decidedly like that, you know those peachy fiery shades, like a peach with like the shimmer within is kind of like a, a little bit more red. This is one of those shades and they just typically don't go well on my skin. So I wish I got another shade. The formula is nice, but you know, for the price, I'm already not feeling like I would reach for it. So I really wanna try the very, very light pearly shade. We'll get to the palette from Natasha Denona in a second, but I just wanna throw it out there. This Patrick Ta blush is kind of a smash hit. It's kind of a smash hit is the first impression that I have of it. Is it like, if you have Do You Know Her, this is just a little bit more orange. That shade is more pink coral. This is just more tangerine orange. I love both. I don't think I need both though. So if you already have that shade, you probably won't need this. But if, but if you're a fan of like Benefit Cha Cha Tin or you haven't tried a tangerine blush, I don't know. If that's something you're interested in, this is really, really nice. This palette from Natasha Denona. I very clearly need to do more testing on this, but also, it is my job here on my channel to give you like the very honest first impression. My very honest first impression of this is I'm not seeing this being worth the money. At least when I'm comparing this palette to the I Need a Nude palette, the I Need a Nude palette is absolutely an investment, but you can see how gross it is. I use it almost every day, so it actually feels worth it. As a truly everyday product, if this was going to be something that you wanted to reach for over and over every single day, I don't think that the eyeshadows are necessarily conducive of that. There's no matte shade in here. There's only like, you only have these shades as like the option for matte. The eye look is pretty, but absolutely one that I could get with even other palettes, not even necessarily the Natasha Denona palette. And the bronzer is nice, but it is very decidedly silicone-y, which sometimes takes longer to blend, ironically, on my skin, like a very silicone-heavy formula. I haven't tried the blush yet. I'm holding out hope for the blush, but it's not that any of it's bad. It's just like, it's lackluster. Like I would much rather you all pick up the I Need a Nude palette and then like one of the L'Oreal bronzers, like the Freshwear bronzers, because I think that the formula of that is just as good as this. 
I know that kind of defeats the purpose of everything being in one palette. I'm just telling you guys the, like, the truth, like what I truly feel about it as a first impression is that I'm not wowed. Um, but anyway, so the Refi Mascara, I'm honestly really excited to try it again because I feel like this might be one of those mascaras that like you keep using it and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is awesome. Because I gotta tell you, it's not like going super clumpy as I keep putting it on. And typically these kind of like, you know, the typical like defining lash mascara will do that, but this one is not. And though the comb is really wide and I am not gonna lie, I find that kind of annoying. Like the actual wand is quite wide. I am looking at my eyes and my eyes look pretty big. They don't necessarily look like wide awake, but like it feels like every single lash has been coated. And I have like both an elongated look and kind of this PC separated individual lash look. Like I think that the lashes look unique. And I think that it also matches like the advertising that they had. I'm actually really open to this being a good mascara. I just need to get off some of the mascara that I had on here. By the way, if you guys don't know this trick, wait for it to dry, use a spoolie. You can just scrape it right off without uh, messing up your eye makeup. I do it probably once a week. But anyway, that was the first try on haul of the year. Uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed for more in-depth reviews um, upcoming of any of these products. Definitely make sure that you let me know if there's a specific product that you wanna see an in-depth review of though. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.